Hello, it's Dr. Ken with you again. This is competency-based assessment in AC, just as an example. Video goes for approximately 15 minutes, and this is part three of four. So we're looking at how we go about, or how I go about my face-to-face -face delivery, and then how I go about assessment. I've called this part A because it uh, has two very distinct sections. So here in particular, I'm looking at uh, the, the delivery model that I use, which kind of is covered by uh, this purple circle, and then the assessment, which is covered by this orange circle. And then how all that feeds into how we're going to do this competency-based assessment, whether it's a knowledge assessment or a skills assessment. So I call this part, part A, as we look at the first section of how we go about uh, doing that. So I hope you enjoy competency-based assessment in AC, part three of three, face-to-face -face delivery and assessment part A. Next, uh, in our little arsenal of assessments is the KA3. This is simply forced study. Yeah, I'm going to be very, um, kind of very direct about this with you. Um, this is simply forced study. Because it's a knowledge assessment, it's a must do. They get no choice. This is a have to do. If you don't do it, you're not going to pass AC. So the range statement uh, says on more than one occasion is the rationale as part of this assessment competency. So even though my standard KA1 and 2 and my SA1 through to 5 probably meet the requirements at a minimum, I make this another requirement for competency as the assessor. So this particular tool simply forces them into study. So I've operated this electronically, but it's now paper-based. And I think the paper-based is better. The electronic one um, that I used to do inside energy space required the student to do the test over and over and over. There might have been 15 questions. and They had to do all 15 every single time before they got them all 100% correct. So um, I've kind of made a paper-based version, which I'll show you shortly. And I think the paper based is a fair bit better. The students must all do all the questions. They've got to get them all 100% correct. And again, they just drop them in the marking pigeon hole and I'll mark them. The assessment is open from a resources perspective, but I encourage the use of the textbook by getting them to nominate a page number as part of their answers. The time is effectively also open. They have from week one through to week 17 to get their assessment complete 100% and it's going to be handed in at the beginning of week 17. I've made the marking easy for myself with some overlay transparencies of the answers and the page numbers that I can simply stick over the top of their answers and I can simply tick and cross through the transparency to which ones are right and which ones are wrong. So marking is actually quite quick, quite simple, not too hard at all. So here you can see a uh, copy of the knowledge assessment. Again, quiz one, once they've got them all correct and 100% right, I circle the successful. Um, this is the correct answers. They have to put their answers in. Of course, um, their version uh, doesn't have the answers. We've taken those out, obviously. And when they get them marked, if it's, if it's not uh, all 100% correct. I simply circle the no and I put the date in whatever it happens to be and then I simply sign it and they keep doing it and keep doing it. They might get two or three no's before eventually they get them all correct. Over here on the right hand side um, this is just the the kinds of questions we ask. This is just a printout straight out of one page of our books. 
a little bit of trigonometry practice, some physics about AC, how to read an oscilloscope, a little bit more physics around AC sinusoidal waveforms. So they simply do the exercises, put the answer in the table, I mark the table, and when they get the table all correct, then they can move on to the next one. Energy space uh, plays an important role in what we do in AC. I use energy space in a very controlled and limited manner. Uh, this may not be the way everybody does it, so I'll just explain how I do it. I use the energy space online assessment tools. This has a large and constantly rotating database of questions organized in training package topic order. I list these in the subject guide as you saw me explain earlier. The big advantage here is quick marking and almost instant feedback to the student. I have a feedback tool to also assist that again I'll explain to you shortly. I tell the students that they have access to energy space content, but there are issues. So there are these caveats. The first is that the content is all text-based. And in my opinion, the textbook actually is better. The second issue is that energy space delivery order follows the training package order. This is a problem endocrinologically. That is how adults learn. And my delivery order makes more sense for an adult learner. Also, the textbook order is the same as mine, making it much better learning resource. Energy space topic quizzes are helpful to some, but no feedback or answer explanation is provided, especially in the big topic quizzes. So we do use energy space for assessments, both KAs and SAs, but I tend not to use the content because it's, it's text-based and they don't particularly like reading to start with and um, you can't put post-it notes for assessment time in energy space but you can put post-it notes in your textbook but more of that shortly so we're now down to face-to-face -face delivery again i personally don't use energy space content so i don't use it in my face-to-face -face, but this is just a totally individual preference if you're teaching a particular thing and you like the energy space content then I say go for it. This is because it's text-based and doesn't follow, again, andrologically a sensible order. So one, my content is based in the textbook Electrical Principles by Phillips. I expect my student to read or watch ahead using the text or the e-learn videos. Yes, and I can hear everyone laughing in the background. I've got two or three students this semester who are doing that and they pass the assessments first time every time. I add to and augment the slide content almost every time I teach, constant improvement type thing. My e-learn videos are simply my PowerPoint lessons with my voice over and the animation of me drawing things just like I'm doing here for you. So this is my animation, I simply draw over highlight things that I think are important, draw pictures, etc, etc. Five. Each week I deliver a PowerPoint with a whiteboard to the side for explanations and worked examples. I find this a very powerful face-to-face -face teaching tool. I have a PowerPoint slide, I have a little controller so I can click through the slides remotely and I have a whiteboard to the side. This allows me wonderful to stop the PowerPoint, do a bit of an explanation on the whiteboard, and then move on. When the class undertakes energy space practicals, we use the appropriate lessons from energy space. Finally, I do about every second tutorial exercise that I mentioned before in class, again, as time allows with what I'm doing. So, again, we I focus on the textbook because in my opinion you probably can't get a better textbook than Electrical Principles by Phillips. So this is a biggie, I encourage the students to read, watch ahead, 
most of the lessons only cover two to three sections in a text. So again, don't be scared to mark up your textbook. I tell the students, you're allowed to have the textbook in the assessment, so why not put notes in your textbook? Why not put tabs in the margins? Get questions ready, use it as a study guide, etc., etc. So, you know, I encourage them to rewrite sections out, redraw pictures. I have this little saying, you learn when you write and you write when you learn. The trouble is we often think that's all about text, but it's also about pictures and diagrams and how to interpret pictures. So there's a great skill for electrical students to use in how to redraw pictures, use graphs, diagrams, how to annotate and reflect using these things. So, yep, textbook is a great tool and the fact that it's paper-based is exceptional. I add extra slides. Here's an example of a, a slide that I use in face-to-face -face delivery when we start to learn about complex quantities. I introduce a, a slide that's not in the a normal run of slides. Uh, wind is something they've experienced and wind is a complex quantity because wind has um, speed and it also has direction. So there is a resultant. So it starts to get their heads around how complex quantities work that uh, unfortunately five amps is not five amps. Five amps always has an angle of some kind and volts is not volts. It always has an angle of some kind and impedance or reactance also always has an angle. So this is a introductory slide to start to get their heads around complex numbers and complex quantities. We do have you know standard slides of course from the textbook and here's one of the standard slides that we bring up and again I'm amazed how long it takes students to get their heads around all the ways that we can uh, describe a sine wave, Vmax, peak to peak values, instantaneous values, time and angles, all those kinds of things. We use standard slides to do that. Then we get uh, to our skills topic and here you can see a skills example from Energy Space. This is this Energy Space provides just straight downloadable um, skills practices. So we just download the appropriate skills practice. I put them into a booklet and again, they just look up the appropriate uh, skills practice in their booklet. We get those directly, as I said, from Energy Space, um, the example skills practice. Again, this is used as supplementary evidence in their skills assessment. So if they don't quite get their skills assessment completely 100% right, I may call for this book. I will look up their skills assessment they did on the day for that. If they did it all properly and it's 100% correct, I will use that to assess them as competent for that little part of a skills assessment. Um, again, in our face-to-face -face delivery, we've mentioned this a few times now, there is the tutorial exercise book. Um, I help the students get started with the exercise tutorial, again, as time allows in each lesson, but they're required to do and complete it for their homework. And again, using this for supplementary evidence as they go through the unit it for now. Thank you for watching and I hope you got something out of a segment on competency-based assessment in AC with Dr. Ken. All the best. Bye.